So in the equation for work function and Planck's equation, we've had this Planck's constants that's stuck about. Now, bef now we have the luxury of knowing what Planck's constant is. Unfortunately, the back in the day, they didn't know that, so it had to be determined. And the determination of Planck's constant came from Millikan, the same Millikan who discovered the quantization of charge and the value of the elementary charge. So what Millikan had done is he had looked at the kinetic energy of electrons that were emitted from a metallic surface, and he plotted that energy as a function of frequency. So what he was getting is he was getting a plot that looked a bit like this. So we have energy on our y-axis, frequency on the x-axis. We get this roughly linear plot, and we notice it has an x-intercept. And we're going to talk about what all of these mean momentarily. But we want to keep our eye on that. Now, in order to even craft this plot, we have to look at what's going on and get an equation. So the photoelectric effect works entirely on the principle of conservation of energy. And conservation of energy is still valid in a quantum sense. So we can use that. It's still going to be useful to us. We kind of have two areas we have to look at. We have to look at the energy coming in versus energy going out, or kind of energy before the radiation strikes versus energy after the radiation strikes. So kind of incoming, we're going to have this energy related to the photon. So this is going to be the energy of the photon coming in. We know how to calculate the energy of the photon using Planck's equation. It's HF or HC over lambda. Now, after the photon has hit the surface, there's two contributions to the energy. First of all, there's the minimum energy that has to be overcome in order to liberate the electron through that work function. Whatever happens to be left over, that is going to go into the kinetic energy of the electron. So through conservation of energy, if we look at the energy of the incoming photon and the energy of the liberated electron, incoming is our energy of the electromagnetic radiation, which we know is HF, or HC over lambda, depending on what you have. The liberated electron itself, well, we need that work function because this is the minimum amount we require to actually liberate the electron. And then whatever happens to be left over, that will go into the kinetic energy of the electron. So this is the equation that we get for the photoelectric effect. On exams, on the diploma, this is not provided. You have to derive the equation for photoelectric effect from conservation of energy, so be aware of that. Now, we notice in Millikan's plot here, he has energy as a function of frequency. So we should probably solve this thing for energy. So kinetic energy is going to be HF minus W. Now this looks very similar to y equals mx plus b. We're told that we're plotting kinetic energy on the y-axis and frequency is going to be on our x-axis. What that tells us is that this h value must be the slope and this negative w must be the y-intercept. So we have something in the form y equals mx plus b. We have the kinetic energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation minus the work function of the metal where those photoelectrons are. Now, this leads us into the important part here. We have this E equals HF minus W, and we've identified the pieces for the linear equation. So we know that Y is going to be EK, M is going to be H, X is going to be F, and B is going to be the negative of the work function. So what this tells us is that when we have these graphs, of EK as a function of frequency, and I should probably extend that axis down just a little bit. You should expect a linear plot, so something that looks a bit like this. The slope of this line should give you a value for Planck's constant. So if we have the x-axis in joules, or sorry, the y-axis in joules and the x-axis in hertz, Planck's constant should be the value in joule seconds. Now, the intercept here, this y-intercept, that is going to be the negative of our work function. The other piece that we didn't talk about here is we didn't talk about the x-intercept. This is one of those times where the x-intercept actually matters. You'll notice that the x-intercept crosses on the frequency axis, and it crosses where the energy, the kinetic energy of the electron is zero. What this means is that at the point where the kinetic energy of the electron is zero, there is no energy left after the incoming energy has kind of paid the toll to the work function. So all that energy has gone into the work function. 
What this represents is this represents the minimum frequency in order to actually have photo, uh, photo emission occur. So the x-intercept on this plot is actually going to be the threshold frequency. Now, why am I telling you all this? These are common questions on exams. We give you a plot of EK versus F. We may ask you, identify the work function, identify the frequency, or you know, use graphical analysis and determine an experimental value for Planck's constant. Those are things that we can ask you to do, and those all come from these type of plots. There is another type of plot that's very similar, but we have to be really careful with it. And this has to deal with something called the stopping potential. As you can imagine, measuring the kinetic energy of the electrons is not exactly going to be an easy task. Electrons are teeny tiny. They're going to have very small kinetic energies. So we want to see if we can work with something a little bit more tangible. So what we have here is we have an evacuated tube with some plates on the inside, one negative and one positive. So what we have is we have some electromagnetic radiation incoming on this negative plate. And this negative plate is going to act as a photoelectric surface. So when that incoming radiation comes in, it will emit electrons. And those electrons are gladly want to, will want to go to this collector plate over on the left side here because negative is going to be attracted to positive. So, you know, we have that incoming radiation hitting this plate. Those electrons will flow, and then those electrons will pass through this wire. We're going to be able to detect a current. No problem. What Millikan thought of is, okay, I don't want to necessarily measure the uh, kinetic energy of the electrons, but let's see if I can relate that to something else. What Millikan had done is we have this power supply here, and what he had done is he had hooked this up such that the power supply, it would apply a potential bias against the electrons. So what would happen is as these electrons would try to move towards this collector plate, a potential difference would be applied inside this tube, such as to try and slow down the electrons. Now, if the electrons had sufficient kinetic energy, they could overcome that electrostatic force provided by this potential difference and still make it to the collector plate. What Millikan was trying to do is he was trying to find what is that minimum value of the electric potential such that none of these electrons would successfully make it to the other side. So the kinetic energy could not overcome that potential difference. So that value of the potential that minimum value in order to stop these electrons from reaching this collector plate, this is what's referred to as the stopping potential. And we can relate the stopping potential to the kinetic energy. So the maximum kinetic energy of the electron, this is going to be equal to the charge of the electron multiplied by the stopping potential. So for here, we gotta be a little bit more careful with the units. In this case, our energy has to be in joules Q is going to be in coulombs, and the stopping potential is going to be in volts. Now, the reason that we want to do this is we want to slightly readjust our plot a little bit. So again, for conservation of energy, we have that energy of the incoming photon. This is going to be the work function plus this kinetic energy of the electron that has been liberated. I guess I should put max here because we're talking about the maximum kinetic energy. And again, we have HF equals W. But this time, instead of having EK, we're going to put QV. So we're going to put that stopping potential in there just because a potential is much easier to measure than the kinetic energy of the electron. So rearranging this for QV stop, we're going to have that equal to HF minus W. Or I might write this like V stop is equal to H over Q times F minus W over Q. Now you might say, what's going on here? That looks a little bit nasty. It is. We're going to try and work with this, though, and I'll explain what we're going to do now. And just, you're going to have to hold on for a second because the explanation is going to take a little bit of time to get through. I have to kind of go over a few little things in the interim. So if I look at this equation here, this equation also looks like the form y equals mx plus b. I could say that I'm plotting my stopping potential as a function of frequency. And then what I'm going to get here is I'm going to get this h over q as the slope. And I'm going to get this negative w over q as the y-intercept. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to put those into my curve straightening here. Or I'd like to straighten that curve. So I'm going to say that y is the stopping potential. The slope is h over q. F is, or the x value is f. And my y-intercept is negative w over q. Now we look at this, 
And we might say this is the worst looking thing imaginable. Yes, it is. It's quite ugly, but let's look at this. So we're going to have a graph of stopping potential as a function of frequency. So this time we're going to have stopping potential in volts. We're going to have frequency in hertz. Just like plotting EK as a function of F, we're still going to get a straight line. Now, this time the slope is going to be H over Q. But here's the thing. Take Planck's constant in joule seconds, divide that by 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19. What you are going to get is you are going to actually get the value for Planck's constant in electron volt seconds. You're going to get 4.14 times 10 to the minus 30, 10 to the minus 15 electron volt seconds. So the slope on a stopping potential versus frequency graph is still Planck's constant, but this time it's in electron volt seconds. And the same thing here down by this on this y-intercept this is still the work function or the negative of the work function if we divide it by q here that elementary charge it's just the work function in electron volts so regardless if we plot ek versus f or v versus f the plots tell us the same thing the slope is still Planck's constant the y-intercept is still the negative of the work function and the x-intercept is still the threshold frequency. The only thing we have to watch for is the units. On a plot of V versus F, Planck's constant will be in electron volt seconds and the work function will be in electron volts. If you plot EK as a function of F, Planck's constant will be in joule seconds, the work function will be in joules. The common trap on the diploma is they'll try and see are you paying attention to what's on the axis and they'll try to pick and they'll try and trick you with the units. Be really careful with that. That is a real common deception trick, and it catches a lot of people. So pay attention to the axes. Pay attention to what's plotted.